Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you again to um, Ava's and the opportunity to speak with you this afternoon. Um, I'm following some really uh, eminent speakers and some great presentations, so what I'm going to try and do is join, um, I guess, the primary end of the chain, which we've heard quite a bit about, and try and bring that through and um, put it under the lens of the consumer and how we see um, responsible agriculture as fundamental to the offer that we give the customers in our store. Um, I don't need to explain to you who Coles is, but I mean, we're a big player in the Australian landscape. We have um, 750 stores nationally. We employ a very large number of people, very many of those in the rural communities. Um, and we're obviously therefore a big buyer and seller of Australian products. And it is the buying and selling of those products that is obviously our fundamental role as a retailer. And um, how we select those products and the priorities we give to certain sourcing decisions that, that drive our customer loyalty and our differentiation in the market. Uh, this is our, our goal um, and what we call our circle of success, which is sort of the um, six pillars of change that as a business we've been focused on for the last uh, nearly six years now since the West Farmers purchase of the Coles business. Um, and there's a couple of things I just draw your attention to here. So we're looking um, specifically to be um, a trusted store, the, the store that is most trusted by Australians for quality, service and value. And I think the trust, quality and the value are probably the three words I'd sort of draw your attention to in terms of what I come on to talk about. The other piece is the fact that we see really pivotal in our, in our development program this stunning quality fresh foods um, circle. And the reason we pull that out as opposed to say toiletries or um, grocery lines is because we know that for customers it's the fresh food offer that determines their preferred store of choice. So when they leave the home to go and do their shopping they think about where they will go based on the fresh food that they want to buy, the meat, the produce, the seafood. And for us, having that part of the offer right so that they choose Coles to come for their main shop means that not only do we get the fresh food part of the, of the shopping basket, but we then get the rest of the store purchase, which you know, can equate to whatever. But I mean, you know, on average around about $40, $40 a week, or $40 per transaction. So we really focus on that fresh food offer. And primarily that fresh food offer is about primary agriculture, meat, poultry, seafood, produce. We know that customers think, um, they don't realise they think, but they do think through this hierarchy of needs when they're thinking about what they're going to buy and what they're going to spend their money on when it comes to food. At a fundamental baseline level, all customers are expecting us to provide them with safe and legal food. But once we have done that, and clearly there's no competitive uh, benefit in doing that, and there's an awful lot of risk if you don't get that right, uh, which is, could be a subject of a whole other conversation, but we, we won't be talking about that today. They then move up this hierarchy and they first think about what it means to them, what's good to them, what's good for them, what's going to be good for their family. And in there sits all the things that really resonate, I think, with the people in this room today. In theirs, where they think about where their food is coming from, is it, is it Australian, if it's Australian, is it local, is it healthy, is it produced and grown and harvested in the way that I am expecting. Um, the more um, advanced provenance attributes around animal welfare, organics, uh, presence or absence of certain additives, that type of thing, go further up that hierarchy. And we try to move customers up that hierarchy because we know as they go up there, they will become more loyal to us as a business and they're willing to pay some premium for that product. And so we're focusing on taking people out of that core kind of value space, that real price-oriented offer and moving them up that value chain as far as possible. So what are customers telling us about, about product? Well, the good news is they're telling us that they really want to support local farmers. Now, what they say and what they do are not always one and the same thing. We all know that. But fundamentally, their wish state is as far as possible to support local and to support regionally produced product. They expect, though, there to be the right value proposition when they do that. And therein lies the challenge, I think, that we've all talked about over the last couple of days. Our job is to try and get that to translate into action at the shelf and to use all the various tools and techniques available to us 
to navigate the customer through that supermarket environment, through those 25, 30,000 lines that are available in any given supermarket to encourage them to purchase and believe that we're the best place to come to to purchase those products that really matter to them. Interestingly, when we talk about food ethics, oh, excuse me. Uh, when we talk about food ethics, customers really um, believe, interestingly, that the supermarkets have a massive responsibility in this space. Um, whether that's something that we've overtly driven or whether that's just the nature of the thing, um, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. But you can see how important it is that they, can, that they look to the supermarkets to take care of that for them. And so it's really important that we, don't get, that we get that right, but also that we absolutely make sure we don't get that wrong. Because the impact in terms of then them moving their shopping decision, bearing in mind most customers, um, most consumers think that everything that's offered in Carl's is different than offered in Woolworths and what's in the chicken shop outside can't possibly be the same as what's in the chicken counter in a supermarket, even though it's all coming from the same supplier. They will be very quick to switch their loyalty. So coming on to what does all those insights mean for us as an organisation, well, it means that we look to produce, buy as much produce locally as we possibly can. We source from all over the country. Wherever we can, we sell locally what we've sourced. So we'll be selling WA sourced milk in WA. We'll be selling South Australian sourced milk in South Australia. We label that on pack where we can. Um, and as I say, we buy an awful lot of Australian produce. But in the main big scheme of things, we probably are quite small. I mean, maybe 5% of the beef produced in this country would come to us. Um, but nevertheless, we have the opportunity to be quite influential and we have a big responsibility. And so how does this translate into some of the things we're doing? Well, as I said, we try as hard as we can to source as much Australian as we can. Um, we have recently moved all our frozen veg back to Australia uh, from overseas. And we've taken a higher position around the use of the Australian Made and Grown logo, made and grown logo um, in response to customers' requests. So if you're buying um, a chicken curry in Coles today, it will say on the back of pack, it'll say made in Australia from local and imported ingredients, and then it will say chicken, brackets Australian rice, brackets Thai land or India or whatever, and it'll say that for primary ingredients. And we're working through that on all our primary fresh and close to fresh in the eyes of consumers product ranges. So they're interested in where the milk comes from in a yogurt, but they're much less interested in where the milk powder comes from in a biscuit, for example. And so we will, we will start at that top end of the chain in terms of fresh foods and close to fresh foods in the eyes of the consumer and make those changes on pack as we come up to pack changes. <coughs> One of the great things about the way in which we've changed our business model over the last five years, really, is we try, by, by doing this, uh, by responding to customers' need to know where and how their food is produced, we've got much, much closer to the primary producer in the chain. A lot of middlemen um, have been removed, and we are sourcing much more directly for many farmers and growers. And that's been um, a real benefit in a whole number of areas for us. Um, by sourcing more directly, we've been able to get shorter supply chains, we've been able to get fresher product, we've been able to get better quality. Customers have responded to that, and we are seeing four million more transactions every week than we were five years ago. And it's resulted in a huge increase in the amount of product that we're actually selling from local producers. So it's been a real win-win for us, and we continue to look for opportunities to do that. The recent term, um, well, it's quite a while ago now, but the recently, to be, the soon to be enacted change in our milk uh, sourcing model through uh, two cooperatives will again enable us to get really, really close and direct relations with the farmers that are supplying the product to us. We already do it on pork, we already do it on poultry, we do it on the vast majority of our produce and we're now going to be able to do it in liquid milk, which is a huge step forward for us and one that we know matters to our customers. Um, so I just thought I'd give you um, a short video from one of our suppliers. This is a, um, a strawberry producer to us, and I'll let him tell his own story. My name is Joe Pignataro. We go strawberries with my family in the Yarra Valley. It was around 40 years ago uh, we started supplying coals. Originally, when my father started, he used to supply six stalls. He would uh, drive around in his ute and drop them off at the back door, and now we supply strawberries all over Australia. 
business has grown uh, enormous. Where we are now, I think about uh, seven years ago, we were growing 350 odd thousand plants. Today we're up to eight million plants. Coles definitely helping us innovate. Uh, we've been able to tap into some of the resources that were available from Coles and some of their expertise to bring other technology and information in from overseas to us here in Australia to help us. Uh, we're trialling four new varieties at the moment in conjunction with Coles. Uh, we're looking at all the different characteristics. One is definitely for less uh, pesticide and, and herbicide, which is better resistant, and also for flavour, and flavour being number one. Coles has invested to help us protect the crop. This is what we call tunnels. It helps us with the rain, so it actually protects our crop from the rain. We don't get any bruising whatsoever with the fruit, which gives us longer shelf life. And I think we're the largest in Australia with this type of production. Perfect. Okay, so that's Joe uh, talking about his strawberry tunnels. And, th and that's a great example of where having stopped purchasing from the open market and moved to purchasing direct from a grower, we were able to grow volume. We were then able to jointly invest in various innovative initiatives to encourage um, improvements on his farm and therefore to get better quality, get better volume, and we get into that perfect circle of success. Um, and that's forward contracted with that grower as well. So a really, really positive outcome for him and for us as a business and for the customer. So we tell the customers about this, obviously. We use a number of channels available to us to do that. And as people were mentioning earlier, social media is an important one of those channels. We know that word of mouth is actually one of the most powerful ways um, of getting messages out to customers. Customers don't trust regulators, they don't trust supermarkets, um, they trust celebrity chefs, social media and their friends. Um, so we try and get those messages and obviously Curtis is very important in that from a celebrity chef point of view um, and we use a whole raft of different channels and different mechanisms to communicate what we're doing. And fundamentally what customers subliminally believe and the messages therefore that, that we all try to build for them is that if it's been produced locally it's been produced in a better way and therefore it's better for you and whilst that's a very difficult thing to say overtly that's the message you're trying to give them and that's their belief set and that's why you want to reinforce that belief set in terms of the future it's really important and we recognize it's really important that you, we can't you know we've got to keep looking ahead we've got to keep working on what the next solutions will be we've got to keep increasing productivity we've got to keep doing that in as natural a way as possible as far as a consumer is concerned and so we spend quite a bit of money researching in conjunction with various um, levy groups with CSIRO with uh, different universities around things that we know uh, matter and on the horizon for our customers, eating quality, input reduction, um, welfare initiatives, um, flavour, productivity, pesticide resistance, uh, in pest resistance, etc, etc. And we'll continue to do that. It's around about a million dollars a year for us at the moment. And finally, because we've done so much in this space over the last five years, we've been really able to start to build and, and build that communication uh, chain through, through the chain. We've got close to the farmers, so we're able to talk specifically to the farmers. We're able to then walk what we do what we call walk the chain, where we take the farmers through to the stores. We take the stores out to the farm, so we get this much better understanding through the chain of what's going on. We've developed newsletters. We've developed various training forum. Um, we've, obviously, I said, we've invested in the research, and we're obviously sponsoring and very keen on, on recognising and rewarding our individual farmers as they do great work for us. So in terms of, of I guess, summarising and looking to the future, we know um, that the customer is absolutely focused on these trends of where and how their food is produced. That's not going to change. They won't sacrifice quality for it and they're unlikely to pay any more for it. So we need to be thinking about how we, as a total chain, can bring those um, initiatives and those ideas to bear in terms of how we grow and produce our crops. Innovation's going to be key keep investing in research and development, and then keep driving that loyalty through the various branding messages you use and connecting the farmer with the consumer through on-pack messaging and all the other things we've been talking about this afternoon. Thanks very much. <laughs>